YouTube. Welcome to Geek. Shh. So one of the major differences between a base model M4 Mac Mini and a Pro model M4 Mac Mini has to be the Thunderbolt ports. You see, the base model gives you a max of 40 gigabits per second, while the Pro model doubles that to 80 gigabits per second. Now, the problem was there wasn't many, if any, 80 gigabit per second Thunderbolt enclosures on the market. Well, that was until Acasis decided to enter the chat. Today, we're reviewing the Acasis 80 gigabit per second SSD enclosure, but full disclosure, Acasis sent me this unit for review. However, they will not be seeing my video before I upload it to YouTube, and I will not be catering my opinions to suit their needs. Now, my first impression of the unit is this packaging looks very familiar to me. I don't know if they're siblings, cousins, subsidiaries. <laughs> I don't know. So what I'm going to do is just mind my business and proceed with the review. So in the box, you get the unit itself, which we'll get to in a minute. A Thunderbolt 5 cable, which in all honesty might be the most important item in this box. A plastic extension. So if you're using like a shorter NVMe, you can add this to it to make it a full size NVMe. Two thermal pads, one being one millimeter and the other being half a millimeter. And you also get yourself a manual. So back to the unit, it feels pretty good in the hand. It is made out of pure aluminum and measures to a little over four and a half inches horizontally and a little over two inches vertically while weighing in at about 151 grams. So a quick teardown of the unit exposes a three pin fan design, which helps keep the unit cool while at full load. Now, speaking of full load, one of the prerequisites for them sending this unit out to me was that I had to use a WD Black SN850X NVMe drive so that I could unlock the full potential the unit has to offer. Now, there's no recommendation on how to use the thermal pads from the company, but through testing, I learned that the best way to control temperatures is to put the 0.5 millimeter on top of the NVMe drive and the one millimeter inside the cover. All right, guys. So first thing first, what we're going to do is a one gig test on the internal drive of the M4 Mac Mini Pro. So we're getting a little under a little over 5800 on the right and 5000 on the read. Let's run that one more time. All right, that's what we're getting. So let's now jump over to the five gig test on the same drive. All right, we're getting a little over 4,300 right and a little over 5,000 on the read. Let's do the read one more time. All right, so now let's jump over to the Acasis and let's do a one gig test. We're gonna jump over to the Acasis Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. And we're going to use the SN850X, like I said in the beginning of the video, and we're doing a one gig test. All right, so we get in a little over 5,500 write and over 5,600 read. Let's do the read one more time. All right, now let's jump down to the five gig test. All right, we're doing a little over 5,600 write and 5,600 read. So basically we're getting better write, read and writes off of the enclosure rather than the internal hard drive. So that's always a good thing. All right, so let's see if we can unlock some magic here. So I'm gonna send over this folder, which is 128 gigs over from the external hard drive, the cases 850X over to the internal drive. So we're gonna Start this real quick. All right, and it's pretty fast. We're looking at three gigs written and three gigs read, basically. So you can see it's pretty fast writing it over. And if you go like around 37 seconds. All right, so now what we're gonna do is send it back to the external drive. And now we're seeing the magic. 
close to six gigs read and written. That's where we really start seeing the magic. And you're seeing how fast it's going now. Started slowing down a little bit, but. So that's where you really see the magic. Now, I also did a transfer test of almost 600 gigs multiple times, focusing mainly on the temperatures. And that's how I knew the best way to orientate the thermal pads to garner the best results. All right, so time for a quick fan test. Now, my office at its quietest is around 29 dB. So let's go ahead and turn on the fan and see what it jumps up to. Now the fan noise is really not loud at all. The best way to describe it is like a light breeze. But also, let me explain to you why the fan noise doesn't matter at all. Next to the Thunderbolt port on the unit, you have a fan button that you can use to turn on the fan when you need to. So when I was doing the 500 gig transfer test earlier, I did the first one with the fan on, and then the next one I did with the fan off. But what blew my mind was, Periodically through the transfer test, the fan would turn on and off as it saw fit. So the fan is automatic. So it has some type of temperature sensor inside of the unit that lets it know when it's time to turn on. And that's why the fan doesn't matter because it will turn on automatically when necessary. So all in all, the only gripe that you could possibly have about this enclosure has to be the price. It's gonna cost you over $200, but at the end of the day, it's 80 gigabits per second. You're not gonna to find too many Thunderbolt 5 enclosures out there, and especially at this high quality. So you can't really trip about that at all. So make sure you click on the affiliate link in the description if you wanna go ahead and pick yourself up one, and I'm pretty sure you'll be pleased with the results, as you can see. All right, so that's the end of the Cases Thunderbolt 5 enclosure review. And I just want to apologize to the cases because when I first initially spoke to them, I told them that I could have it out within 72 hours. This was the only sec. This is the second unit that someone ever sent out to my channel. And I was surely mistaken. You cannot, you know, do no 72 hour turnaround when it comes to things like this. You need at least a week or two to really sit down with it, to test it out thoroughly before you can put out a video on it. So. I gotta apologize to them about that, but you know, I, I made sure I went ahead and got it done. Now, part of the reason why it was taking a long time with the review has to be because of this right here. This is the 5090. I was able to finally get one at MSRP. It was very, very hard as you know. So that was part of the reason I had to do the things that I already was doing in life. Plus I had to be out there in Micro Center trying to get my hands on one. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, the next video that I have up is probably going to be the Ray Q. The Ray Q, what I can tell everyone out there when it comes to the Ray Q 40 gigabit per second version and the 80 gigabit per second version, don't buy it. <laughs> that, that's all I can tell y'all right now. I'm going to have my review up sooner than later, but don't buy it. I'm also going to be doing a UHD 750 um, HEVC encoding video. I'm working on that right now, so that should be up next week. Anyway, this is DeMarco Payne for Geeks. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours.